All right, guys. Here's another vlog, and uh, I hate to say it, like the last probably half a dozen or so vlogs, it's not good news. It's not the story isn't developing in a, in, a, in a way I'd like it to. But every now and then, you know, I still have to put something out there and kind of show you where I'm at. So I'm going to address three things in this video: what happened, why this lens matters, and now what. So uh, the other day, I was. Uh, out on top of the uh, parking garage or whatever, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, basically getting time lapses of uh, the, the fire smoke and, and the summer evenings and stuff like that. I've been really trying to push myself in the last month or so to just get outside and just just get, even if I can't get stories, try to get like cool shots. And uh, time lapses are, are a good example of that. You know, Get something that I can put out, even though I, I want story. I want the interviews. I want to be able to tell somebody's story. You know, business stories, organizational stories, problem stories, all, all those things. All, all those things that I wish I was doing right now. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyway, I was up on the parkade, and uh, it was a windy day. And out here in the Okanagan, we don't really get wind too much, so. I will admit, in my general running gun sort of outside, I, I don't really think too much of the wind. So when it was windy, I was just like, oh man, it's windy, you know, and I, I didn't think of the risks. This is not good. So anyway, I set it up for a time lapse, and I walked away with that camera there to go get something else, and I got a bang, and sure enough, and it looked like it broke camera's on camera. the ground, you lens is, you know, 20 feet away from the, uh, the body, and, uh, and yeah, that was, my day was done, I was, so, why is this such an important lens? As you can see, I've got quite a few lenses on the table here. Now I kind of made this chart. I'm not going to go into a huge breakdown. I kind of did this more for my own mental visualization. Uh, but I'm going to make a quick point here is this lens is basically this one right here. Um, actually, I'm going to explain this a little bit. Uh, you know, there's, there's fast indoor type lights and then there's like outside lights or lights, lenses. <laughs> And this, I will admit, is the only problem with it, not so much of the problem, you can't have everything in the lens, but the only sort of drawback concern is it's not a fast lens. It's not something I'd do inside with in low light conditions and use. It just wouldn't work. It'd look better than a cell phone, but it wouldn't, wouldn't look good for... <laughs> I still wouldn't use that in any professional setting by any stretch. Got other lenses for that. Um, actually, when I did my research, uh, these were the, the two lenses that I needed. I can do probably all my work with these two lenses. All these other lenses are niche. You know, this one has a little bit more zoom. This is going to be good for concerts and stuff like that. Yada yada. This is like a good bird wildlife. I actually pack this around usually most of the time when I'm on photo hikes. It's usually these two lenses. This is like the, uh, you know, those big bird lenses you see. This is just like the, this versions of it, which is pretty cool. And I got some primes here, you know, like two of these are manuals. So, uh, again, like they, they all have their place. I, I couldn't get rid of any of these things. Um, say for example, if I'm running and gunning and I'm going to go through the evening, this will be like my daytime and then as it gets, as I lose my light, I'll swap over to this one because it's faster, but this is a prime and I, you know, there, I, I kind of wish I had a better lens for that, but I don't, but it is what it is. Again, if I'm like on a paid gig or whatever, I'll just use whatever I got. But anyway, that's here nor there. So, uh, yeah, without really, like, basically without really explaining this in a lot of detail, I have a huge hole in my abilities to go outside. Basically, this is like 97% of all the shots that I've ever taken, all the video I've ever taken, was done on this lens. And I no longer have it, and I don't have anything else to really fix it. Um, this, let me, let me explain a little bit about this lens. This lens is basically a glorified kit lens. Um, generally speaking, in the industry at large, professionally speaking, you know they build cheap kit lenses because most people are going to use it as an amateur to kind of learn and go, okay, whatever. So they don't really, they don't really need an expensive lens. They don't need you know all that stuff. And then professionals, they will know exactly what lenses, and they'll they'll get those lenses. 
Now, what makes this one interesting is it's actually the only professional standard lens that is built around the concept of a kit lens. Um, I'm going to use full frame terms, but for all intent and purposes, this is a 12 to 60 lens. But in the full frame equivalents, and this is what this chart is all about too, it's, it is a 24 to 120 um, uh, range, which means I can shoot those wide shots. Not the super wide, but I can shoot those wide shots. And in the same lens, I can zoom right in and get something at 120 mils. And if I were to be real frank, rarely do I even need anything even beyond 80. I mean, again, most of the time I'm probably between 24 and 50. 80 is a good like zoom in punch for like getting close into somebody. Uh, 120 just kind of becomes more of a, you know, I mean, so sometimes it comes in handy. It is definitely nice to have in one lens. And then when you get beyond this, you know, like you're getting into like wildlife on the 600 range. Uh, even in landscape, you're, you rarely need to go beyond 200. You know, even uh, like this is the equivalence of a, um, an 80 to 300 F28, right? Like roughly speaking, anyway. And I'm rarely needing to go to the 300 mark. It's usually in the round. Uh, so anyway, that. <laughs> so. Anyway, so what, what makes this lens special and unique? Like, what, what is a pro lens? Well, for starters, I will say that for a lot of things that I won't get into, this lens and this body were designed at the time that, like, this came out in 2017, and I believe this lens came out in 2017, and it's got a lot of features that w was never done before. Like, this camera just blew people's minds. Like, what you can do with a camera in 2017, huge. Again, that's a whole nother thing that I have had. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the key things of the lens is it's got, well, a lot of lenses have stabilizations. This was, like, the first body that had stabilization. I think there's Olympus that came out with it first. But this is the first combo that introduced both in-body stabilization and lens stabilization to work together. In fact, for the most part, I'm not even sure if any other cameras even do that well. You still have to choose between one or the other. So if you've got, say, a Sony or, or a Canon and it's got lens stabilization, you can't use the in-body, which is like very new to see in-body full-frame uh, stabilization. Even within Panasonic, I think they're the only ones that really pioneer and push that. So what that really means is um, I don't need a tripod in a lot of situations. Like, yeah, if I need to get that static shot and sit there for a while, yeah, I'm bringing a tripod. But this allows me to handhold, do video like it's on a tripod or, you know, I can still put some movement into it, like controlled movement into it. Not, not gimbal level, but, and not have shaky, blurry, whatever, <laughs> junky looking videos. Like, it looks like it's, like it's really good. You know, like, like even if I had to, in a bind, I've been there where, I'm hand-holding like for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and, and, and like, yeah, I get maybe a little wobble over time because I'm like, you know, getting a little cramped up, but I couldn't do that with any of these other lenses. <laughs> now, in-body stabilization, I do have a couple of lenses that do do it, like this one here, but this is like an 85 millimeter. This is too much telephoto. It, it's it's kind of pointless. In fact, as much as I like and I would, I'm, I'd rather have the stabilization in here than not have it, it's really not as necessary in the way that it, it would mostly be used. So it's really a whatever. Um, no stabilization, no stabilization, no stabilization, no stabilization. This one here is like my big bird lens. This is like a two to 600, uh, 200 to 600 zoom lens. So for video purposes, that's still too much. I'm still putting it on a tripod, which is really nice because that means it's, it still has benefits, but really it's more for the photos really helps get those photos in and then the, yeah this lens here doesn't have any stabilization <laughs> um, let's see here. okay another big major features um, what makes this a pro lens is um, uh, in cinema lens there's two major features there's focus breathing and parafocal that are really good to have for video lenses now I will admit I think this does this electronically you know, like it just does whatever math and it just makes the adjustments because I know if I go too fast or whatever, it mess the math up or something. But anyway, what this means is, uh, unless I were to spend like an obscene amount of money to get a cinema lens <laughs> and to have to support that, 
Um, I can zoom in on a target, get the focus, and then zoom back out. As long as I don't go too fast, it'll keep the focus. Whereas virtually all, most of these other lenses and most lenses in general, you can't do that. You change your zoom, you gotta change your focus. And so if you're only running with one camera, you know, I can kind of suck, you know, like it's, yeah, you have to make cuts. <laughs> I still technically have to make cuts too. You know, you don't want to be zooming at the same time if, if it's not a controlled zoom. But yeah, so anyway, that's a feature that's in here that uh, was really nice to have. Uh, another one is the, is the focus breathing. And I'll probably demonstrate with one of these lenses. So basically what focus breathing is, is like, you know, you've got your frame, but if you adjust your focus, you actually adjust the what's in that frame. And a really bad one is nauseous. You're just like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> but with that said, I've seen professional work done with it. And I'm like, <laughs> you, you're using the wrong lens for the job. Star Wars, uh, they're, they got some shots and some scenes where they're doing some focusing from somebody close and somebody far and the whole freaking thing. Because <laughs> they're using anamorphic lenses and it's just not correct. For us. Like they should have used a different lens for that scene. But anyway, very nice feature. In fact, there's a whole ton of features out of this lens that, like, it's just revolutionary in, in the industry, and I make use of it. In fact, um, my photography style is largely based off of using the strengths of this combination. Um, there's a lot to my workflow, there's a lot of considerations. I have considered making a video to explain this in better detail, but I haven't really been motivated to want to do that because it's kind of like my signature. Uh, workflow so you know but basically in a nutshell it's like doing or it is like doing HDR type photography now in traditional sense of doing HDR photography you need to put it on a tripod you cannot move the camera you have to take your multiple shots it works now what ends up happening for most people is because the tripod is a pain in the ass to carry around you don't want to do that all the time it's like a, okay I'm going out to go do HDR photography and then that's it where I do it like day in and day out, and that's most of what I do. <laughs> so what this does, and I'll, you know, is between the lens stabilization, is I'm able to get, you know, however many shots that I need within reason, and it will stabilize. So I can get like five shots, like da 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 da, -da and then I can merge them together in post, and that's how that's, that's the magic behind that. Works really well. Really like that. <laughs> and now that it's broken. Um, I can technically do it with this, but again, I'm locked in at that 85 millimeter range, and I do do it with this. But again, this is like a like this is like a super zoom, you know. I don't have anything in that realistically that is in that usable range. Most of the shots that I that you see are probably in that 24 to 35 range, you know, maybe 50. Like I can go beyond that. I do go beyond that, but most of my shots are under 50 mils. But I like to shoot as close to 50 as I can because it looks better. <laughs> so now that's all busted and broken, I don't know what else to do about it. And if you're hearing noise upstairs, that's just, it's just the way it is around here. Um, people live upstairs, that's, that's not their fault. But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, let's okay. Let's carry on from okay. So what happened? Why does this matter? This lens matter? Yeah, basically, if I were to just summarize that again, is it's like everything that I've done and can do, my strengths, my assets, has been in this combo. All these are all niche lenses. None of them can take over for this. Um, if I were to make quick examples of like typical workflows, typically if I'm going out on a hike, I bring these two lenses. This lives on my camera, this is where I get most of it, but if this is something like I you know, see an animal or I see something that I really just want to zoom in on, I'll, I'll use this, but even then, it's not that common. You know, like this one here, it's a studio lens. It's too expensive. It, it, it has, it, it, I don't want to risk it. You know, I got manual lenses. They're, they're good for when they're used good for what they're good for, but beyond that, they're not really good. This is a really good, like, sort of portrait type lens, but I don't really do a lot of portraits. Uh, this one here I get, like, again, like I was saying, if I'm going out into the evening and I need a low light backup just in case, that's what I'll bring. And then this one here would be a really good, uh, so, you know, say if I'm in a, you know, concert or uh, stadium or whatever it may be, and, and I, I can't get close to the subjects, but if I have a height, this is like, 
a good zoom range for for getting that sort of stuff. But yeah, these are all support lenses, and this is the meat and potatoes. Although all these two lenses are my meat and potato lenses, even though I wish I could use this more often. So as far as what I can do with them now, I mean, yeah, okay, it's broken, it's out of the picture. You know, like if I were to go for a hike, like I went the other day to test to see what, you know, make sure this is still working good. And fortunately enough, all I got is like a scuff here. Everything else seems to be good, which is good. <laughs> Uh, but I brought this lens and uh, this lens with me. Uh, so this is like a fixed 34 millimeter or whatever it is. And what I found with this is I'm con like, I, I, as soon as it's on the bottom, I'm always wanting it to either be more telephoto or wider. You know, tell you why. Like it's even though this is like where most of my shots are taken when I dial it in, it's such a I feel like I got I'm, like I'm. I'm I'm, I'm stuck. <laughs> I like my zooms. <laughs> and then, so I ended up actually putting this one on again. I think I said this earlier, but, uh, and again, it's just at that 80 millimeter, there's nothing remotely wide about that. You're basically shooting telephone the whole time. You get good shots, but it's not a run and gun lens. It's not a standard. It's not an event. Like, it's not a primary lens. None of these are primary lenses except for these two. And I, I can't treat this uh, like these are completely different animals. I cannot treat this in, like none of these, none of these replaces this. This is again, these are the only two lenses I ever owned. I can do so much with this. But so yeah, I mean, I guess I should probably let this be at this. I don't know what's next. I don't know what this means. Obviously, I'm in a really funky situation with so many things with covid living situation work like everything everything is not working well and even before things weren't working well this was the plan you know like this was how i how i make my way in life you know grown up job a professional valuable at doing something don't get me wrong, there's fun in photography and videography, but I didn't buy this stuff for the hobby. I bought this for the profession. I'm a marketer. I understand business, and, and I want to help people with their ideas, and I want to help help do bigger things that I'm not doing, that I want to do, but it's hard to do because people are not discovered. But I need the tools. And I need those opportunities. And uh, right now my tools are breaking and the opportunities are hard to get. And yeah, so I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to be doing now. But uh, that is my vlog. That is where I'm at right now. And uh, hopefully, hopefully someday, one day I will make happier, happier, more successful related vlogs but in the meantime this is the story of my life this is what's happening so uh, other than that have yourself a good one thanks for watching and we'll see you around <laughs>